Uh, I did think that this was smart on the part of Ben Harris and his uh, boyfriend. You know. <laughs> and just so you know, I'm not homophobic, okay? <laughs> it looks like they have an intimate relationship and good for them. <laughs> my concern is my my house or uh, house carriers or trusted house sitters or these hostels. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to know the actual GPS of every hostel and all house sitting locations. Yes. <laughs> Could you go online and just find out? Uh, because they do a good job explaining about uh, how to do, um, how to be responsible with another person's house. <laughs> and then um, there's what's known as the Airbnb. Yes. <laughs> Could you get me all the Airbnbs? <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a, a hostel experience, but it's less expensive than an actual hotel or motel. Pooch. <laughs> Seems to be somewhat fun. I'm never, I'm never uh, participating. The yeah, Airbnbs and hostels throughout the Americas. Oh, <laughs> I'd just like to know the GPS location, the ownership of them, and then <laughs> if they have a computer or an internet. Poo. <laughs> a lot of those that travel around and like the romance of meeting new people. Because I'm, I'm the first five years after I was um, actually 17 years old. <laughs> I moved to five different countries, 16 different cities. <laughs> I had probably 50 or 60 different jobs. I was one of those that could easily find myself employment because of being somewhat charismatic. Yes. <laughs> above average intelligence <laughs> and uh, I did a lot of jobs but for some reason I really didn't give a fuck <laughs> I was uh, still developing <laughs> wasn't until I was 25 years old <laughs> <laughs> Now, um, I just wanted to know all those travelers that I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure there's some very fun people that you get to know when you're staying at a hostel and you, <laughs> you go out to a restaurant. And, of course, they're on a very, very small income, but a few beers really loosens things up. Yes, it does. <laughs> And uh, staying with other travelers, you get to know all kinds. Yes, you do. <laughs> so why don't you just give me that? Because I like to know all kinds that are traveling. <laughs> now, I I realize that um, a lot of those that are are very successful. Yes. Mm -hmm. Their their early adulthood from 18 to 25. I I myself would like to be successful, but somebody's been preventing that. <laughs> Having all that life experience experience from 17 to uh, 25 when I actually uh, had graduated from Northwest University. Yes, I traveled a lot. <laughs> Two suitcases and a box is what I had for about three or four years there. <laughs> I know. <laughs> now, um, well, it wasn't that important, was it? It was all about the life experience and who was I going to meet next and what was I going to do and what was going to be the new experience. Now, um, well, I like to travel. I've been to Albania, Denmark, Sweden, Kosovo. Yes. It's been oh, German. <laughs> Now, um, these, uh, this concept of the eggs, yeah, <laughs> there are some women that I want to give fallopian tube uh, births to, yeah. and um, they're, they're over the age of 35, but some of them are in their 40s and quite possibly their early 50s. <laughs> they're still ovulating, but they're concerned about the, the challenges and the risks of giving birth at that age. <laughs> and it seems like somebody... Um, it has been doing a lot of egg freezing, yes, mm -hmm. for about $20,000 a pop, yes, the cost of egg freezing, implantation, thawed, fertilized with sperm implanted in the uterus, this step uh, includes checkups and diagnostics. <laughs> Now, the weird part was I thought it would just be my sperm and you'd leave your egg in there. Yeah. And then we'd get some sort of syringe and we'd put it in there right above where your vaginal opening is. And just squirt it in there and something would happen. <laughs> I 
could be a little naive about the actual process. <laughs> and then if you had to have a C-section, you'd have it at the top of your of your tummy where the butt of the baby is <laughs> instead of uh, <laughs> cutting your vaginal muscle and your, your cervix channel. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> kind of doing a different way of giving pregnancy to those that are at-risk births. Yes. <laughs> The whole condition, as uh, one of these volunteers, is I get the orgasms and you get the baby. <laughs> as long as I get the orgasm, I give you the baby. And whether that is uh, the actual <laughs> opening of your cervix channel or <laughs> maybe a little science. Ooch. <laughs> For those over the age of 40 that do want the fallopian tube uh, conception. <laughs> because I'm sure about this, okay? <laughs> Where exactly do the sperm and the egg meet? <laughs> they meet in the fallopian tube. <laughs> do they meet in the vaginal office? <laughs> <laughs> you do know that. You know, some women realize they have two fallopian tubes. <laughs> What if, what if I gave you twins that were not identical? How would you feel about that? <laughs> it's kind of like I could, I could, uh, we could fertilize one egg in one of your fallopian tubes. Yes, <laughs> fertilize another egg in the other fallopian tube. <laughs> you could have non-identical twins. Yes, you could. Yes, you could. <laughs> that would cause you to really lactate. <laughs> You know, there's a woman that I love the face of, and I wanted to adopt her. Yeah, has six kids and one adopted daughter. And the thought was, I'd like to have two little non-identical twins, whatever the Lord gives us, so that one of them, or both of them, each one could have a breast. <laughs> The thought was, <laughs> we could start with very small nipples in a relationship. <laughs> By the time she gets done nursing, <laughs> two to three times the necessary amount to actually feed our, <laughs> our children. Yes. 